we're going to demonstrate today our superior capsule reconstruction technique. In addition, this patient had an upper subscap tear. There's minimal arthritis in the glenoid and the humerus with a massive retracted tear. And here is the lift off of the upper subscapularis. As you can see here, we are repairing the upper subscapularis tear with an inverted horizontal mattress fixation, placing the swivel lock into the area that we have pre-cleaned with a 5.5 shaver, dunking the swivel lock and restoring the tension of the subscapularis that was lifting off as seen on the previous images. This not only allows us to fix this torn tendon, but can help us recreate the superior capsule with the stay stitch, which we will show at a later time. As you can see here, there is no further lift off and the subscapularis is well attached. We do a thorough cleaning after we determine that the tear is unrepairable. There was a significant amount of scar during this surgery as this was a failed revision rotator cuff repair. You can see here we're releasing all the adhesions from the rotator cuff. Making sure to release the adhesions both inferiorly as well as superiorly. You can see here the massive retracted tear of both the infraspinatus and supraspinatus. Using the Kingfisher, you can see that the tear is not repairable and will only translate about 10 to 15 percent. After using this pull test, we clean the superior portion of the glenoid and burr down this area where we will have the patch sit and with the goal of having it heal medially. Depending on the situation, we save the labrum or remove it depending on its stability. The decision was made during this case to remove the labrum. The data demonstrates there's no major difference and I do this based off of what it looks like when we're in there intraarticularly. As you can see, we've burred down the superior surface of the glenoid to allow for improved healing of the dermal allograft. We perform a simple subacromial decompression to improve visualization. We limit bony work here as there was already an extensive subacromial decompression performed. We clear out the posterior aspect and the remainder of the disease cuff. As you can see here, there were a significant amount of sutures and anchors in the humeral head as this is a revision surgery. We're using the passport measuring device. And here we place either a four or a three centimeter by 12 millimeter passport that allows us to pass the graph without issues. As you can see here, there's an extensive amount of scarring and sometimes this can take a significant amount of time to clean up. We remove any of the remaining sutures and anchors if possible to allow for a fresh healing surface. All of the scar in the medial row is taken down to allow for a fresh bleeding bed of bone. Again, we work laterally as well as the patch will overlay on this area. After removal of all the scar tissue, we use a power pick from Arthrex to make small microfracture holes with hopes of improving the stimulation and adding further biologics to the patch healing. As you can see here, we cover the entire footprint and all of the sutures are removed from the previous surgery. Following this, we percutaneously assess the placement of all three of our anchors. Our goal is roughly the 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 2 o'clock position on the superior glenoid. We always try to make sure a single anchor can be placed at the crutch of the coracoid as this is the strongest bone. As you can see here, we place the percutaneous guide system. These are 1.75 knotless fiber tacks. They have a 15 degree angle, so it allows for us to prevent any breakout of the, in the glenoid. I usually start with the anterior one, as you can see here. We give it a tug to allow for locking of the mechanism, as well as to, to assure ten, appropriate tension. Second one, we place at 12 o'clock. Again, with the 15 degree angle, we can avoid all the 
sutures as it becomes a quite a tight space. Finally, we place the posterior fiber tack. Again, with previous renditions, this was the area where you could have blowout into the glenoid surface, but with this new system and the 15 degree angle of these suture anchors, we have completely eliminated this issue. In addition, we infrequently have issues with crossing of the sutures or damage into the suture anchors. Again, we view laterally to fully visualize the glenoid and visualize our trajectory and care is taken not to penetrate into the old rotator cuff. We then place our medial roll swivel locks Our goal is to place these roughly 20 to 25 millimeters apart. Anything larger, we consider three medial anchors. Again, size of swivel lock depends on the quality of the bone. We can go up to 6.25 as needed if the bone quality is poor, as most of these cases are revisions and can be anywhere from first time to third or fourth time surgeries. In this case, we're able to use standard 4.75 swivel locks given the good bone quality. Next, we use the Arthrex SCR measuring device, making sure to always reset to zero. We start with the medial anchor measurement followed by the anterior ankle measurement. Again, making sure to use the stay sutures from the swivel locks, not the fiber tapes as the thickness of them prevents us from using this measurement tool. After those two measurements, we proceed to the posterior medial humeral anchor and measure the posterior distance. Again, as you can see here, I've abducted the arm around 30 to 40 degrees. This will give us a much better measurement, allow us to have the patch to be tight when the arm is at its side. Upon completion of the three measurements, we use one of the glenoid sutures to measure the two remaining distances. Again, any suture is okay to use as it's a trajectory from all three of these. As you can see here, we again reset to zero, measuring from the anterior to central suture. Generally, this is around six to nine millimeters. We always reset with our next measurement. Once we have completed the measurements, we can proceed with the patch preparation. As you can see here on the schematic in the upper left hand corner for orientation and to help guide this video process. I start by marking the posterior medial portion of the patch. Place the marks for the three medial portions or the glenoid portions and then start measuring the lateral portion I also orient the patch and keep the patch facing the patient for orientation, marking the anterior and lateral portion. This patch is three millimeters thick and generally needs Mayo scissors to cut through it. Here you can see us removing the excess patch as demonstrated in the schematic. The anterior and lateral portions are marked. I leave 12 millimeters on the lateral portion and for the remainder of the rim, I leave five millimeters of excess patch. Here we use the metal basin and a empty swivel lock as a punch. I only punch the lateral portion of the patch as we are passing the fiber tapes through this area. We will now proceed with passing the sutures through the patch. As you can see here, we start with the medial row. This is the self-locking sutures. We grab two of the three. We grab the looped black portion as well as the blue suture. I thread the blue suture in horizontal mattress fashion with the two ends facing down towards the glenoid. Following this, we pass this through the pull stitch 
Again, making sure to fold at the small purple hash on the blue suture end. This allows your appropriate amount of suture to go into the anchor and to self-lock. Again, a gentle tug is given. As you can see here, there's some significant counter pressure needed. Once it pulled through, it does lock, so you're unable to pull it back out. So I do hold on to the graft to make sure it's not sucked into the cannula. Again, making sure to stay away from the orientation of the last suture, pulling all three of the sutures away, and taking the two necessary sutures out of the cannula. Again, we repeat this process using a fast pass scorpion in horizontal mattress fashion, again with the sutures facing towards the glenoid. I have found that passing your horizontal mattress with a width of at least three to four millimeters helps with the necessary untensioning of the anchor with final fixation as you'll see shortly. Again, pathing through the loop stitch, folded in half at the appropriate mark. Gentle pressure is performed to allow for the self cinching mechanism. Again, you can see me giving some counter pressure. We have roughly around two centimeters of suture outside of the cannula. Again, grabbing the third suture out and grabbing the two necessary sutures for passing again. We use the scorpion again to pass horizontal mattress suture using the blue suture. Again, we are passing with the fast pass scorpion. You can see here giving three to four millimeters of separation with this horizontal mattress suture. This is a more tedious part, but also the most important part of the procedure as once these sutures are locked, you cannot unlock the mechanism in the sutures and anchors. Again, you can see the loop suture passing through and folding in half at the appropriate mark. Gentle tensions performed. There's an area of difficulty right here and it passes through without issues. Again, all three of the tension sutures are there left. And now we perform the passage of the lateral portion on the patch. Again, a fiber tape grasper is used. We keep the patch flipped anteriorly and superiorly to prevent any suture entanglement. We keep the stay sutures as well. And I use a loop grasper to pull the sutures through the patch in the appropriate orientation as you can see here. At that point we have two fiber tapes and two fiber wires through there. As you can see here, we are checking to make sure there's no entanglement. This is the most medial fiber tape. Going with the posterior one as well, you can see nothing is entangled in here. And then we check all three of the knotless sutures to make sure there's no entanglement. Again, this is a crucial part and one of the most important parts of this procedure because once you pass the graft, it's quite difficult to untangle everything, especially with these self-locking sutures. As you proceed with the actual passing of the graft, all three of the medial or glenoid sutures are held. We use a kingfisher with gentle pressure through the cannula. Again, as you can see, this is a pretty large patch. We're able to get it through the passport cannula without splitting it. Tensions made on the glenoid sutures, the self-locking ones, and then we pull the fiber tapes as well to tension it. With these knotless technique, occasionally there's a need to self or further tighten given there's a lot of tension in the system. You use this loop grasper and you reduce the tension of the system by using this pulley setup. And this tensions the graph down nicely as you can see here on all three of the sutures. Following this, we proceed with the lateral row repair. Again, isolating a single fiber tape anteriorly and posteriorly.
As you can see here, we bring it into abduction, allows us to visualize the lateral row, insertion site. We use a 475 swivel lock. And different from standard dunking, you bring the swivel lock all the way to the posterior margin or medial side to allow for tensioning of the patch. We sequentially tighten the fiber tapes to allow for excellent compression on that area. Following this, we insert the swivel lock in standard fashion. removing it and then going to the second portion of the lateral row, taking the last anterior and the last posterior fiber tape. As you can see, they're different colors. It allows for ease in knowing which side is which. We again punch. And again, similar to the last one, we bring the swivel lock all the way to the patch insertion and this reduces all of the slack in the system and allows you to excellently compress the patch as you can see here for the double row fixation. We insert the swivel lock again in standard fashion. If there's any concern for the overall fixation we will increase the size of the swivel lock needed. Here we had good bone quality, we were able to proceed with the standard instrumentation. As you can see here, we've released the tension and are pushing up on the humeral head. There is no elevation of the humeral head and the patch is tight in that area. We'll now proceed with the side to side repair. As you can see here using the probe, there's very low mobility of this old and scarred cuff. We use a scorpion to pass a fiber wire stitch through the patch and then use a kingfisher and a bird beak grasper to penetrate the rotator cuff posteriorly and grab a lower down suture. This allows us to place an interrupted stitch in the rotator cuff and hold it to the patch. We do alternating half hitches as you see here and this ties us nicely to the patch for further tensioning of the superior capsule. Again, we kept the stay sutures on the anchors as well, so we use this to repair the rotator cuff posteriorly to the patch and the medial portion of the humerus, as you can see here. As you can see here, we have one attachment of the cuff to the patch and the medial humerus, and the second one in the interrupted fashion. We use this stay stitch if we do not have a subscapularis repair needed. But in this case, we use the subscapularis stay stitch, again, passing standard fashion with the scorpion anteriorly. We sequentially tie this with alternating half hitches to allow for the patch to be tied down both anteriorly and posteriorly to allow for all points, four points of fixation and to remake the superior capsule as seen in Mahata's data. Once we've completed the entire superior capsule reconstruction, you look from the lateral portal, you can see the suck down look of the patch. You do not want to see it going straight across, but rather this reconstruction of the entire superior capsule. We probe it to make sure it's tight and then release tension on the arm holder and we're pushing superiorly. You can see the head will not move and is well fixed in all points of fixation.